nice. How we all do it? Just turn that down. Let's check my mic level. I had it. <coughs> I was messing with it earlier. I reckon that's probably about good. Let me know otherwise how we all doing. Hey, there we go. Super. Why can't I hear myself properly? Nice, great. Good. I still can't hear myself properly. Oh, well, we'll get over that. We'll get over that. Hey, Shuffle. Hey, Kim. How's it going? Aaron, nice of you to drop by. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's Friday. Friday evening for me. So, um, I don't know if this demonetizes me straight away or not. Oh, well. I might change the music actually. Keep defaulting to this playlist. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Hey Yuri, how's it going, mate? Thanks to everyone for dropping by. Appreciate it. So I did have a sort of plan for this evening. Sort of. Move my light round. That's blasting me. I feel it heating up in here already. <clears throat> Get a nice fancy light, they said. No wonder all the streamers have those little tiny little square LED ones. Oh, a massive big thing. It cooks me. Hey Stephen, how's it going, mate? Good to see you again. Mehmet, hello, 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 hello. We'll see how we get on. What's the agenda today? Well, I need a better way of doing this so I can keep the chat on the screen. Something like this. Hey, Ward. Inspired by me, wow. It's damn hard. It is at the beginning, mate. It is at the beginning. It is at the beginning. But you know, lots of things are. It's gotta be worth it in the end, right? Or well, hopefully, anyway. <laughs> lots of learning, thanks. I'm glad you guys do. I'm really glad that um, so many people seem to get something out of um, my sometimes not the best videos. Some good ones there though, I reckon. So it's been a long time. I used to do this um, when I was learning certain things as well. Right? I would just come on GitHub and I'd search for it. And I would see who's who's got what doing what. And it kind of makes for some interesting, interesting reading. Um, so I thought, there's a couple of um, random, I say random, a couple of web scraping frameworks that I've never used that just look so bizarre. I just thought it might be quite good fun to, to give it a go. Um, I 
Obviously not this top one. I don't think we need to look into that one very much. It's quite fascinating finding people's repos. What's this? Shout if you've used any of these. This is always a good indicator. Seven months ago. Hmm. Refactoring. That's interesting. Where have I seen that before? Not sure. They are, I'd say alternatives, although some of them are built on top of it and it's just things that people have cooked up to do various things and it's quite interesting what do you think about this sort of thing what are we doing so this is the the HTTP request it's set up here it uses URL lib so it must be running a Set input. So this could either just be um, creating just a post request. I don't know if you can log into GitHub that way. Or is this actually setting up a headless browser? Saving the HTML. That's interesting. You save it. What do you think about other coding languages, scraping libraries? Um, <clears throat> Python's pretty much the web, the best way to go. I've done a little bit in Node, but I don't know JavaScript very well. And I've done a bit more in Go. So there's Collie, Go Collie, which I quite like. It's, I think it's pretty good. But, um, Python is pretty much the way to go because it's so easy to write. And it's Python's really good with data. You're a freelancer, that's cool. What else have we got? Oh, a spider version. It's going well, that's great. Nice. It's fascinating. Let's have a look. What have we got? Base, where's the response? Transport. Process upload items. Here's our request. I need to look into um, transport managers more because I know in the uh, they talk about it a bit in uh, requests because obviously request uses it as well. You can like really customize it. Transport adapters. Yeah, see this this could be quite um, quite interesting. I love requests. There's so much more to it than just such a basic just getting some data. 
you create your own adapter and then you mount it to the session. SSL. Yeah, you see, I feel like I should learn more about this. It's interesting. Cool, so let's keep going. That's that's interesting. 2.2k stars, I've never heard of that. Dumb download and the scrapes that went 45. Anyone heard of this one? 45.4k stars. It's more than, it's more than scrapey. Drop support for Python 3.7. Now we see, it's a full command line tool to download media contents. Right, that's why it's got so many stars then. I really like tools like this, especially when they're written in Python. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, but it's for it looks like it's for downloading um, videos. If you if anyone's tried to like scrape video sites, you'll recognize the M three U eight URL. Proxy download by vid. Hi, get the stream. I see. Nice. You probably like Qtile? Yeah, I've heard of Qtile. I used Qtile for a little bit when I was um, figuring out what version of Linux and everything that I was going to use. Um, do you know what? Do you know what? I really absolutely make, um, it absolutely makes sense to for me to like that. But I don't really, I really can't be bothered to do any configuration. Either it comes pre-configured and I can just change the color scheme and I'm happy. Or the very, very minimal amount. Because, I mean, I haven't changed, this is, I haven't changed my i3 bar. I haven't changed my, um, I haven't done Rofi or anything like that. Uh, so I really can't be bothered to do so much configuration. That's the problem. Hey Pablo, how's it going? Is Grab any good? I've no idea. I've never heard of this until literally this stream when we just looked at it. Another web scraping framework? Cyborg. Seven years ago. Maybe we should do a stream where we take old packages and try to get them to work. I think that just sounds miserable more than anything else, actually. Let's not do that. End up spending more time on configs than actually working? Yeah. I, I get that and I did that before I don't do that now I literally use the def all the default i3 um, shortcuts uh, so I just don't have to worry then even like the little blue thing around the highlighted don't bother changing any of that what does this even do then that was an example Interesting. CSS selectors. Hey, crazy fanatic man. That's okay, mate. Yeah, this is like, we should be scraping pictures of the Terminator or something instead. See, this is um, interesting to me to use decorators. It doesn't seem to fit right in my mind to do it like that, but Who am I to say? Turn this down. 
for me. It's a bit loud for me. <coughs> Create a pipeline. Oh, that's interesting. Run until complete. Let's have a look then. Job. Requester. Lots of people like this one for async. Okay. Take the response, try to load it. Runtime error. Should we make that one? Here's our decorators, our co-routines. Hmm. Well, I got the window open, that was a massive clap of thunder. Interesting. Job. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's no use to us now, but seven years ago, maybe. Can we look at other developers' web scraping projects every week? Yep. I would want to do that. Um, I just need to organize it, pretty much. And uh, yeah, I think that'd be great because I can criticize all of your code without having to show you any more of mine. So, you know, it works one way, great way can tell you that you all suck um, without being judged myself. Perfect. Um, web mining, don't like that. Deprecated. Web scraping tutorial two years ago. Let's have a look at this then. Oh, I see. PyCon introduction, really? Who's this person then? This could be good, couldn't it? I could just, I could release a new video. I could just like talk for eight minutes about nothing and just say, come to this re this person's repo. Nine years ago, what did, what did web scraping PyCon nine years ago look like? URL lib two, BS4. See, that's how long Beautiful Soup's been around forever. <laughs> Story of my life. Yuck. Yep. All looks fairly familiar, right? There's quite a lot of stuff in your if name is equal to main. I used to do this a lot. Put, put, um, call my variables like abbreviations. But when you get a bigger code base, it just, it really ruins, it really messes you up with your head. So I would recommend not doing that. Like I would just do R is equal to, and I would just have my response object as R. And then, you know, yeah, so much code in the if name. Yeah, you wanna, you. in my opinion, I know this was nine years ago, so I mean, fair, fair play, but I would have a main function to run it all. It's great Netflix. Selenium. Yeah, this looks a lot like, yeah, makes sense. I'm sure we all recognize this sort of thing. Cool, well, that was interesting. I was looking at this earlier and I found a couple that I was thinking about looking at a bit more, but they're not popped up in this one because I'm on a different browser. I must have had them 
cached or something. I did a video, excuse me, sorry. I did a video on this one ages and ages ago. It just mashes requests and beautiful soup together so you don't have to do the same things. Makes it more succinct, but I just don't see why you would ever do that. Fair play though, cool project. Web scraping for humans. Really? Another old one. <laughs> oh, right. You just do this. Fair enough. I'm going to have to search for it. There was one. That... Why, why isn't it? Why is it not coming up this time? It's called this. I remember looking at this ages ago because the guy posted it on um, Reddit, I think. And it comes up when I mentioned the um, thingamajigs, the decorators. I've thought about, no, I've thought about this a lot. I still don't quite understand why. But it looks like a pretty cool put together project. I just don't know why, I don't, just don't know why you'd ever use something like this. There's a playwright behind it, so you can do, because if you're just doing HTML sites, you want you want this one or this one, you or this. You don't want to do either of these, because it'll be really slow. Reddit Pro, yeah. I never did the whole Reddit thing really, scraping or reusing to be honest. I look at it I look it for look look at it for finding opinions about things. Interesting to know what people think. Cause it's kind of a place where people put what they think without a monetary agenda. But they might have other agendas. It's even got a Docker image. This is another thing I want to try. Oh, light mode. Not this. This. As an alternative, it's basically just the, it's like, uh, it's the scrapey selectors outside of scrapey. So instead of beautiful soup, I thought it looked quite cool. Fascinating. So we might give this a go at some point. I'm quite tempted to try this. I don't really want to install all the playwright stuff again. like scrapey inspired mixed with flask hmm I find all these things quite interesting but I just I don't think I, <laughs> don't think I'm gonna ever go away from what I already use but this looks like quite a cool project I feel like my messages aren't showing that one did. Are you posting links? I don't think YouTube will let you post links. This is Nerd TV, great job. This is really kind of like um, niche stuff here without an awful lot of great insight from me either other than this looks interesting. <laughs> So does this spit it all out? 
This one moves the data to a CSV. Okay. We can search on, I'm sure we can, we can search GitHub. Nothing bad can happen. Why not just use Scrapey, yeah. Who, who's, whose is this? Is this yours or is this one just you, you found? Collect contact information from its list of specific business websites, okay. Okay, all right, looks fairly useful. This is the one that you found from someone you know. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, this looks like something that I've done a reasonable amount of. Oh, telephone numbers, right? Do I do any group coaching or coaching? I don't, I'm afraid. I don't, I just, I don't feel like, um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm structured enough to, um, to do coaching. What I want, what I would like to do one day in the future is run like group live lessons. So I'll just live stream something talking about and then take questions at the end, that sort of thing. But I don't think I'll ever do actual mentoring or coaching. I don't think I'm good enough to be honest, especially not as expl not at, not at least explaining it. Right, so. Cool. Yeah, we know where we're going with this. I uh, don't speak French, but I understand library for something of regular expressions. Yep. Okay, today's date. Get page amount, okay. Everyone following along? Class, everyone understand what we're doing so far? This is good because someone's already written this all for me. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is, yeah. It looks fairly um fairly well structured. Get page amount. Although we've got um, we've got camel case here in our snake language, a nitpick. Mm -hmm. Get the pages, return. Okay, yeah. Get links. I guess we have to get the individual page links. Get the listings. list okay cool so I'm gonna I've got a few comments about this one I know that I don't I know that you've posted someone's code that, that you know on github and I don't I don't know what what how good what level this person's at it's pretty good. It's good enough. There's a few things that I would do. Um, without looking at the site specifically, I wonder whether returning the, the amount of pages that there are is the best way to go about it. Um, I would also use a session now and I would, uh, I did a video just recently he's doing something in data science perfect that's great um and this is these are all just my opinions of of reading someone else's code and passing it off you know how what what i would do differently it doesn't mean that i'm right or this person is right it's just i'm just clearing that up before anyone does or says anything stupid <laughs> i did a video recently about making more out of requests i would always create a session object and i would mm -hmm. add in various headers and everything to start with. So I would have a function that creates my session and I would use that. Just makes it a bit better, really. Um, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff. Again, I would have to check the website. Um, 
does this mean is this is Ajax as in checking the Ajax request or I don't fully understand anyway that's all good uh, print statements everywhere that's fine that's handy for when you're just working with it I'm guessing this person actually uses this code for their own um, use so that's fine <laughs> <My dad. laughs> yeah <laughs> this poor guy doesn't even know that we're all looking at we're, we're all how many of us are there 29 people silently judging his code it's good code and if if it works for you perfect getting all the links yep always do that grab all the links first create a list return the list perfect get the amount what is amount oh is that the pages where's the th am I in the right file yeah where's the thing that runs it don't judge my code it's not any good oh is this your code don't, or are you saying just don't judge your code No. Okay. Good. Anyone is uh, any any code I'm willing to to look through. This isn't mine. Okay. Um. At any level. If you if you send me some crap and you tell me you're an expert, then I'm going to tell. Then I'm going to judge you. But if you send me something and you tell me you've been learning Python for three months. Hey. Um. How not to get blocked? They block after two hundred requests. Uh, you need to use proxies really or you can try um, just slowing it right down I guess because if you try and do it quickly it's easier to see what you're doing you really have to use a proxy get a proxy that rotates for you okay, uh, I can I can't visit the site in any browser but I've tried my scraper can still pull data from it it's usually the other way around. Uh, I don't know where you are in the world, Stephen, but um, it, <laughs> if you need an IP, if you need a new IP, you just reboot your router and it will reconnect you to your ISP and you'll get a new IP. Right, got distracted. What are we doing here? Getting the listings with the pages? Oh yeah, I see. Page and I would I would make this more clear, but that's okay. I don't this person is obviously not English, so we'll we we'll ignore that. Why are you using camel case? Yeah, I mentioned that. I don't know. It doesn't I like camel I like camel case, but I would um maybe they have different a different language experience. Or maybe they like it. All good. Um, in and the amount, yeah, yeah. This can um, doing it this doing pages this way can be a bit more brittle because you're loading the first page up to grab the number of pages, but in between doing this and creating more requests to get the data from the page. I mean, it's less likely that the data on the page is going to change, but it, what you get sent back because you're sending a different request entirely could change. Unlikely, probably on a site like this, but on a site where things get updated more often, it, is a, it can be an issue. Um, I much prefer to pull all the data, go to the first page, pull all the information that I want, and then send send it out of my function send all the information i want um out of my get function into the into one half of my tuple and then the the next page link into the other one and then you can just follow it through and you can go to the next page the next page the next page like a crawling camel case is a javascript thing uh, i use it in go as well Uh, 
dump it all out to Jason. Yeah, that doesn't work, unfortunately. So you're, t you're telling me that your scripts can reach the website, but your browser can't. We tried a different browser, incognito mode. That's weird. Camel Casey first saw in Pearl. Yeah, I'm sure it's, um, let's have a look. Let's settle this origin. Uh, where is it? 1995. Just a random post. Pumpy case. Wow. Oof. So luckily we got camel case. Um this looks fairly solid. I think it works well for this person. Oh yeah, this is the other part I was going to say. What are we doing here? Oh, I see. Trying to, if that's there, if do this. If not, do this, do that. Okay. That's a bit of a pain in the ass, isn't it? Um, stop working because they changed the website and Cloudflare <laughs> so you can't get the <laughs> uh, I've been there been there done that that's so annoying isn't it it recognises that you just go directly to the back end API response and it goes yeah that's not right Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Some kind of cookie. Well, if you're using uh, incognito or whatever it is, does that not get rid of all that problem? What is this music, man? I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can play um, actual music on stream. No, I can't. Right, I'll get copyrighted. Whatever, doesn't matter. Cool. This is um, this is pretty solid. I think it could definitely be tweaked a bit, but it looks like it uh, works well for this person. So that's nice. What else have we got here? So how do we know? Where do we decide? Oh, there we are. I was going to say, where do we decide what what actually how we're actually making this request? We we'll do it with this. I don't like calling it a parser though. Anyone else got any more GitHub repos? Or oh, I'm going to keep browsing. Are you roasting? Are you talking to me? I'm trying not to. I'm uh, researching. My mic stand keeps falling down. That's why I keep pushing it back up. Please review my repo. All right. I'm assuming nothing, there's going to be nothing dodgy in um, any GitHub repos. Right. Nice. This is a good read me. Straight to the point. No BS, I like that. A diagram. Oh, a lambic. 
or database migrations. Cool, so it's a scrapey repo. You found you you found it that from that video, yeah. That one that video just randomly blew up like three months ago. I'm glad it helped though. Dev branch. Okay. Let's restart. <laughs> I always do that as well. <laughs> Concurrent requests. Cool. Yeah. Up your pipeline. Cool, let's have a look at that then. Oh, SQL model. Only crawl home page. Okay. Right. Okay. I need to see the other bits. Hang on. This is the This is the spider file, right? Yeah, if you want to post, you can't post links. So if you just post like the name of your project, I can have a look. Getting it work to LM, uh, getting it to work with Alembic was tough. Yeah, I don't know much. Yeah, my my experience with database migrations has been very much managed, as in I haven't had to really do it. Um, Is it inter you put the item into the actual spider as a yeah okay so this is the spider 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 cool don't you want to um, move some of this this is just a suggestion if this works for you then I, that's great um, don't you want to move this into its own I can't see your items you don't have an items dot pi whatever it's called I would I would have a separate um, item to move your item to that file and then take all of this out of um, your spider and just have your spider do this bit and do the item loader and then return that out and then send that into your pipeline um, oh shit Kyle $9.99 hey sweet thanks man I appreciate that I think that is the first one that I've ever had as well so that's really kind of you Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's really kind, man. I'm not sure what to say now. I'm not a professional streamer. It doesn't happen to me every day. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I would move... Um, I would separate them, and I would have your pipeline to just do your commit which I think is what you're doing here. 
So I would, yeah, but apart from that, it looks pretty good, man. I'm, I'm impressed you managed to get Alembic working. So well done with that. Um, nice. Yeah. Looks like a cool project. Was this your, what have you, has anyone, is this a, um, did someone else put, um, but the recent, is it, is it this, is it? Sorry. Oh, no, is it not this? What is it? I'm not, it's hard because you can't, because you can't post links. It's hard for me to work out what your actual GitHub thing is. Yeah, Led Z, that looks pretty cool, man. Uh, that's what Scrapey's really good for. I would just say on your next, your next pass over, just separate that out and just try and like really put different parts of the logic in different places. Kyle, you're gonna to have to send it to me, post it again. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what it is. Or if you didn't post anything, then um, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's hard to know. Sorry, I realised I said I'll be right back just as I changed the scene, which cuts my mic, cuts my thing down. Anshul, sure, thank you for the. Um, I'm sorry, mate. I don't know what currency that is, but I really appreciate the tips, guys. It's really not necessary, but um, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Can't find anything. It's on GitHub. Is, it, is that supposed to be on, on GitHub? Is that what I'm doing? I need to have a place where I can post links very far. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm searching for, all GitHub. Is it private? It's not private, is it? It could be. I'm not getting anything. GitHub.com like this? Why is it changing the URL? Let me come over here in case it's a logged in thing. Not finding it. I'm doing it on my, um, is that because is it being copied wrong? Yeah, it's in my, it's me copying it out of, um, sorry. 
yeah it's me copying it out of uh copied it out of chat and it had an extra space which is why it was giving me all that stuff all right cool the all important read me good yeah always write always write yourselves good read me I never do bites me in the ass cool yeah using a VPN Very detailed. Good. Let's have a look at the code. Okay. Okay. We're using regex for something. Okay. Where's your um, main function running? Oh, we're all in it. Did I miss how to work? Where did I miss it? Oh, okay, I see. I see. I understand. So you put. Right. Okay. 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 Got ya. Okay. The f my first, the first thing I'm going to say is, um, I would really consider splitting up, um, splitting up your code just into like functions of chunks that, that do, that does different things. But that's okay, we can read through. So these are the arguments that we're taking in. Um, and um, also call your variables, uh, give your variables a bit more of a descriptive name. Um, like these ones are good. This one I guess is pages, so I would give it something, call it something like that. Not sure what this one is. It's on the other screen. That's fine. Creating a list. P is the okay for our pages. Yeah, we're going to loop through all the pages that we wanted to go through. Good. I like this. Handling our errors and exceptions. I think this does it all for you, though. I don't know if you need to do it and try and accept. I could be wrong, though. I think, oh no, because if you just have this, it will actually um, exit. And whereas here, what you're just saying is you're going to print there's a problem if you come across one in the request. That's fine. Creating our soup. Soup.select. Good. Get some CSS selectors. I like that. Okay, so we're using the, we're using regex to find the job key. Um, hang on. What's the job? What what's job key? Is this um? I'll just open it up. I think I know what it is. Bear with me. It's like, um, it's one of these ones, isn't it? It's the UID for each of the job postings. Yeah, it's, um, where are you pulling it out from? This is in the text, isn't it? Or is this in the... So I, I'm pretty sure when I did this last time round, you think the header has all the job keys. Okay. 
I'm pretty sure when I did this last time round, it was in one of these um, attributes for the uh, ID. So if I can't see, but I can't see what I'm looking at now. But if you if you were to go back to it and have a look and find it, you could search the rest of the the the, um, the page and see if you could find it. I generally I know this probably works for you, but I I prefer to not do regex if not if at all possible obviously sometimes you have to um, and also this this isn't that um, there must be a better one so can I okay it does work so the, assuming this is the selector that you wanted we go back up we got list items so I would almost go for, um, you can search within this for the individual LI tags and then go, like if you even wanted to go a bit further and you could do um, the UL, LI and then div. Um, I always thought these were a bit more brittle, but I just copied and pasted it and it worked. So that's all good. This is adding into more, um, not right where is it it's in the it's in the url i know what you mean results okay so where did we we've already done our database where's did you set the database up separate separately because with the first thing i'm seeing is our execute Or are you trying to find it? Or have I not read your... <laughs> you've managed to get all the job keys with info. It's a list. Yeah. So we're getting those. And then we're saving it. Well, then we've got our list. Yeah, get the list first from each page. Yep. And then you save that list into your database table. And then come back. Oh, okay, right, I understand. So you're getting all the job IDs essentially, storing them all, and then you're gonna loop through all of the IDs to go and get the data, which I'm assuming is further down here yeah okay okay i wonder if that's a tad i think you're probably adding in an extra step there than you need to let's carry on though before i before i say uh okay so then we are enumerate good um so now we are Okay, I've lost it a little bit here. Oh no, I think I understand. Yeah, and this is where we are going, getting. Oh, this is, okay, I understand, I see. This is your active, activating your VPN, I get you. Then pulling out the information, updating as you go along. Just switch VPN. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, if that works for you, then I don't see why that's not an issue. My the VPN on uh, my VPN is mostly blocked by <laughs> by it, but um, yeah, no, if that works for you. That's fine. Then we're updating. So you're um, adding bits of information as you go. So you're finding the title and then adding it to the key and so and as on so and so and so. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that right? 
that looks like it. So we're at table, title, job description. Okay. Cool. Um, right. So my first, uh, how long have you been, um, how long have you been learning? How long have you been writing code for, Kyle? Just out of curiosity. There's some good stuff in here. Yeah, the job, ultimately the job has, uh, the table has job key, name, company, pay and description. Yeah. I see that. So the first thing, um, the first thing that I would say is a few years, but last year is the peak. Okay. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, so I can, I kind of see what you're, what you're going for. So you're trying to, you're doing all this. If you want to have it controlled like this, you want to use argpass. So you can basically type it in a terminal. You can give it the arguments that you want, and then you can pull them into your code. So if you're interested in doing it like that, rather than just running this as it is, look at argpass. It looks complicated, but it's, it's, it's not. It should be fairly simple. The next thing I would say is, you need some more functions. So split out the main areas of what you're doing and what you're trying to get done with each part into its own function. And then add those functions to your main function and then run your main function. You'll find it just a bit easier to understand and read through. So as you can see, although this all follows through nice and neatly and it all works line linearly, I was struggling to see and work out exactly what we were doing where until I kind of skipped down a bit. So I would say that this should be, this could be um, argpass as I said, if you wanted to do that or whether you just put them in, and then this is its own function, right? So this function is one that does, makes a request um, for each of the, um, pages and then it gives us all of those job keys things job IDs right so this could be get job IDs from pages and we would say let's pass in the page how many of many pages we were going to get like you're doing here and we we'll loop through it or you could even split it out even further and have the loop outside the function but I think this is okay the next thing um, I'll come back to the database bit in a minute. Then I would say this is our next part, our, ne our next function really. Ooh. This is actually just getting all of the keys. Where's this list come from? Where's J key? I've lost this bit. Oh, I see. We're appending. Where's this? Um, I can't see this list for some reason. 41. There it is. Sorry, I found it. Okay. So this, this could be its own function. So we'll, we'll get all of the job IDs. I'm going to come back to that bit. And then like this one could be another one where we're pulling it. So you're basically just making it nice and easier to, to um, that parts to find the distinct from the batch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. I understand. Um, yeah, and then this one is just passing the data out. So I'd split this up probably into three or four, maybe even five functions, depending on how you feel that it naturally fits. Um, and I would have your, you can put if name main thing at the bottom. Um, so you can then have run everything under that. If you wanted to do it that way, that's what I would do. The database here um i don't think it's particularly efficient to add each one as you go 
I get what you're saying where you want to save all of the IDs into your database first and then go through them. I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't know if I would do it that way. I would probably just store all the IDs in a list and then I would go through each one pass the data that I wanted and then update the database with all of the data in one go. So we're like, we're saying, let's get all of this information first and then do our um, update. So then we'll, then we'll insert it into the database. I just feel like we're doing quite a lot of in and out um, where we could do this all in one go. So you've got lots of execute and commits. Not going to be an issue on small scale like this, but as soon as you scale up, there's a lot of database queries. Um, so that's why I would say, those are my thoughts. Split it up into neat functions that do a certain thing. So as I showed you, maybe I've got three or four I could easily see. And I would, um, yeah, this is okay. Cause this, I, I understand why you're doing this. And then I would, um, move the database to pull up. If you wanted to add, if you still wanted to add, save all the IDs first, absolutely save all the, save all the IDs first, because then you can, then you know that you've got them all in there and then go through them. Um, but if you was to run, if you were to run this over and over again, do you just then pull out all the IDs that you've already done and you're just updating the data as you go? If you, if that's what you're doing and that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But I would still, try to um, less less executes and commits and just try and do it all in one go it was your first web scraper this is honestly those are just think the the first few of those thing is just tidying it up it's just tidying it up this this the, the actual bits of code in here and your logic and your thinking behind it is pretty solid all I'm saying is just to tidy it up a bit and make it a bit more readable and a bit more um, user friendly. But um, yeah, this is good work, man. This is good work. There's some good stuff in here. You do NLP jobs? Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing, Matt. That, thanks for sharing those, Kyle. And um, thanks for donations again. Really appreciate that, mate. It's um, This is good. You've got, you've got a good foundation here. It's only advantage to just using Selenium. Yeah, it's much slower and breaks a lot. All right, has, who's, has anyone else um, posted some more up? Go to paste code, I could, yeah. These are not on GitHub. This one on GitHub. Atom user. What one am I looking at? I've lost who I was talking to. Harris. Do you have any throttle library that you recommend? Um, normally, if I need throttling, I'm using Scrapey and I use the inbuilt one on, but there's one called AIO limiter. Your messages aren't popping up. It's it's if you if it looks like a link, YouTube will block it. This one. So um, I've put this into um, AIO HTTP code before. I think this is in the example here, but it's, it gives you this like nice neat little thing. Um, and it it will um, control it all for you. Um, I started doing a video on this. This might not work. Um, 
All right, still good. This one, this is a good one if you're not using Scrapey. Um, I'm gonna do a video on this one at some point. I think I've written the code already, but I just haven't um, made it interesting. Paste code. How do I find them on here then? This doesn't look like it's going to go on the end of here. Like this? Oh. Well, I did something. Are we looking at the right thing? Nice. I used to do this. Oh, no, I didn't want that. Just want to do it a bit bigger. We'll zoom right in. Think you figured it out? Ban certain words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope you typed it out exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, it's the right one. Cool. It worked. Um, for what I use it for, yeah, it is. For me, it was. It just made I, I found it just easier to work with. But I think loads of like the companies that use Selenium for actual like testing and stuff. I think they're just always going to use Selenium. Right. The first test. You can't even send the GitHub name through. Oh. Yeah, the YouTube filters out some funny things. The second file is the more scraping back. Okay. My bad. Okay. So these two, do they work together or is just 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 the um. Uh, with the ND scraper, what type of logic required to import only new? So you would do if you're you're saving all them to the the job ID, right? So you would just query your database and say you'd you'd have the job ID as a unique field in your database. So if you try to add it again, it would just say you can't because it's already in there. Um, and how to update? You've got two choices. You can either just update with the new data and disregard the old data or you can query them against each other. They both have their ups and downs. For this case, that case, I would always just probably go with the new data and just push the new data in. The only downside of that is if you've got, let's say, um, the, hmm, actually no, that's probably not even a downside. I was trying to think maybe if they updated one part and not the other, but you'd still just update with whatever was on the, whatever was on the site. So that's what I would say to do. Yes, they work together, okay. So the first, the first test is always if we can just have a quick look at the code and work out what it actually does. Oh, you just told <laughs> You just said it. Okay, fine. Uh, it's to download a book and get all the answers. Normally I don't have permission to see them. Go head out to the gym. Thanks for dropping by, crazy fanatic man. We'll see you again later. It's to download a book and get all answers and paste them on the book and download the full book as a PDF. Okay. I don't quite, I think I know. Okay, so, um, never used that before. Sounds interesting. Pill, yeah. Um, got a base URL. Get in the files. This is a nice function name. Tells us exactly what's happening. I like this. Going through our JSON. Yep. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, we're doing some replacing. Oh, I see. So it's got characters that you don't want. 
Right. Makes sense. Cool. That looks good. This is good. I like this. So we're saying this is a good example for um, the last the last two that I've said that you need to sort of pull bits of create useful functions that do things. So we're saying here that if the extension of the um, the file is .jpg, we're going to send it to this function to do this with the the link and the output, which is here. Can't see the oh the output, which is the name. So this is cool. Passing through our key error, fair enough. You probably want to maybe put something in there so you know the key error happened. It's up to you. Um, there's your get save the file. Cool. Bytes. Yep. Response dot content for media files usually. Oh, we're taking in a load of data. Okay. Again, you might find argpass useful for this. So you can just type it as a like a dash flag. Oh, it's like I wrote this code, look. Capitals for the um, constants, or whatever they're called. This is good code. You see how it's um. You know exactly what's you know exactly what it's doing because of the the way oh you've got um snitch switched up to camel case it's just tidying up if you wanted to change it but you can see this this is a really good i know it seems obvious but this is a really good variable name current page you know exactly what that is you know exactly what that is amount of pages yeah Come off there, shows the old part that you wrote. Okay, I can see that, yeah. This is all the PDF stuff, right? All the image. Oh, image. Oh, I see. oh yeah, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, okay, no, no I, oh, sorry, I misunderstood. I get you. Yeah, yeah, no, this is cool. Yeah, the PDF stuff past pasting answers on the image. Yeah, this is, seems like a really cool project. Um, this you said this was the older part that you wrote because there's no um, there's le there's a lot less functions in this part compared to this part. Let's have a look at the other one. This looks like um, this is this looks a lot like the code that gets generated out of um, Postman. That's not a bad thing, by the way. That's just an observation. So we've got our function to get the answers. Get answer link. We're giving it the cookie that we need, the book number, and the page. Perfect. Some of these won't be relevant, but I don't know why you wouldn't leave them in. We're giving it the cookie here. This is good. Exactly what I would do. Yeah. The only reason I say that, they said the bit about um, Postman or Insomnia is because it does this a lot, which I would never type. But um, no, this looks good. Solution layer, so finding it, replacing the um, new lines. We're doing a regex search in the, oh, this is, um, okay, we're finding the, 
Is this finding the right file based on the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. This is pretty good. I like this. This is this is very um Yeah. This yeah, it's finding the right file. Yeah, yeah. No, this is good. I like this code. This it says exactly what it's what it's supposed to do. I think this is good. To be honest, I think it's pretty much what I would do. I wouldn't this is this is I think what you said your old your old code. I would have functions for this probably. Um, just to make it a bit easier to read. But apart from that, this is pretty good. And you can use argpass for this if you wanted to. It's useful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you do this just for you, for your personal use or did you do it to help other people as well? Personal, perfect. Great project. Yeah, we've got some good code here. Especially this bit. And you gave it to someone too. <laughs> nice. This is good. I like this one. I mean, I, I don't really have an awful lot to, to say. It looks like it works. It looks like it works well. And I can see exactly what you're trying to do in every step. I think it's good. Nice one. It's a good project. Oh, nice. Uh, are you using Linux? Yes, I'm using Ubuntu with i3 WM. And I'm streaming from Linux as well, which some people don't do. I'm doing that. Um, on that website, there's some brute force that did like 40 to 50. Really? Poor website. <laughs> <laughs> Some poor webmaster woke up in the morning and went, shit. No, probably didn't. It probably has millions and millions and millions of um, hits. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Good project. Um, I think I might have I missed anyone. Uh, why are you grabbing the cookie via input? Um, I'm assuming that the cookie was coming from somewhere else. I didn't actually look at that part. Yeah, why were you why were you taking the cookie in from the user input? Is that because you were lifting it just directly from the browser? Here's another one. Is this um? Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I feel really bad. Cool. Another cool project. I'm enjoying this. Right. Read me first, then. Good, tells you exactly what it does. Install the requirements.txt. I still like a good old requirements.txt file. I think a lot of people were moving, well, I don't know, but I was definitely listening to some people where they were talking about, is it poetry instead to manage it? I don't know. Supported countries list. Yep, because we're gonna be reverse engineering the API, right? Nice. Always good to include in it. Everyone writing that, writing the. I know. Normally, like the README is the first part, and you're, I'm, you're like, you gotta be. I, I write yourself a better README, and I always say you should. But every so far, everyone's Readmes have been much better than mine. Mine are terrible, bare minimum. I even got an image in these ones. Look. Okay. All right. Where are we at? Minor one line, yeah. <laughs> sometimes my, sometimes mine are just the commands I need to, to get it to work. Uh, 
Right. Countries. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, that's for the um, API. Custom exceptions. Oh, country not found exception. Fair enough. That's what my bash history is for. You say that, right? I do, that, um, when I um, do um, when I edit video videos because I edit it on edit on Linux using Resolve DaVinci Resolve, I have to convert them, and I instead of like writing a script to do it for me, I literally just rely on my bash history of FFmpeg. Occasionally, I do it wrong. I forget to change the name, overwrite it, or wonder where my. Oh, so stupid. Right. Hi, Alex. How's it going, mate? Yeah, I've been there. Okay, so what have we got? Start. Okay, so this is like. So this is putting everything in here, creating our class, defining everything that we need. Get sizes and stock details. Okay. A bit late here, what are we working on? Um, this is the best kind of, of stream. People are willingly submitting their GitHub repos for me to look at, um, which which is great because I get to see what everyone else is up to. It's interesting. Um, hopefully help a little bit. Although the last one, and I can tell already this one looked pretty solid, so. <clears throat> when I got the answers, the books I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would do I would say that you probably learnt more writing all that learning how to do all that than um, whatever was in those books anyway so we are enumerating through this is cool I like um, I like your um, type hinting something I don't do enough of in Python I think that's why I like Go because it forces you to um, this is cool Love your content. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you uh, dropped by. Release details. Okay, so we're returning a list. So this is getting on the product info. Cool. Makes total sense. Okay, yeah. So if we're if we're looking for the image. Oops, but there isn't one. Um, we get the key error. There we go, somewhere else to get it instead. Sizes with stock. See how this is all, all of these um, variable names. This, I mean, you could easily have just written sizes, but when you actually take the time to write out sizes with stock, I. I know exactly what this is going to do. I know exactly what this is doing, and I, having worked with APIs and stuff like this before, I can I know what this is exactly what's going on. So it's so much more useful. And we're storing it all into our release, which will be our class. Cool. And we're running it with a while loop. What breaks this loop? Not seeing it. That's why I must just be missing it. I want to have a look at the other files. That looks all pretty cool to me. I like that. It does not break since it's a monitor and runs twenty four seven. I thought you, I thought you might say that. Oh, 
We've even got dock strings. I mean, this is this is some next level shit right here, man. This is the the stuff of dreams. Type hints, dock strings. You're probably better at this than I am. Cool. So we're initializing with our country code upcoming which is equal to true so we're even checking here to make sure that the given country code is actually al allowed and this is the custom error custom um, exception I'd like I this is I really I think this is really cool this is really good because this is a you could have easily have not had you could easily have used a default exception but you've actually written out your own just so it's so much clearer. Um, this is this is really well. This is really well written code. I think you knew that. Cool. So we're just basically getting it. We're returning a dictionary of our JSON objects. This is really good. I'm not going to lie. This is really good. Yeah. Utils.py to your helper functions. So if anyone, if anyone's, um, taken my you know how to how to scrape fry the the api type things wants to know what the next step is from that basic stuff that i've shown you is this this is our data class it chose you see it chose um you didn't using data classes which is like i guess like the inbuilt pydantic um which i think is is great i think that's perfect for this use case yeah, this is a really good, this is a really good repo, man. This is a really good project. This is really good. I love the custom exceptions. Um, I love the, um, the, your, the way you've named everything and you've documented everything. I mean, I, I could just, I, I, most people that, that are familiar with this could just take this and then know exactly what happens. I've just looked at it for what, five, 10 minutes. I know exactly what you're doing and I know what you're doing. Um, it's brilliant. Yeah, this is really good. Really good. What do you run it on out of curiosity? Do you just run it on your own machine or just run it on a small server somewhere, I suppose? And what do you do with the... Um, um, the, the output? Did I miss that bit? Oh, I see. I get it. I, we're looking at um, this. Is this a Discord post or something similar? Anyway, this this is really good. This is, I mean, yeah, this is a great, great project. Great project. I might um. I'll star it for you. Yeah, this is really cool. Nice. We've had some great projects. All doing various different things that people are, different use cases. We've had someone cheating answers or books. Getting stock monitoring, which is a really cool project to be to be looking at. Um, yeah, nice. Some good ones, some really good ones. Do we have any other ones? How long have we been going for? 
hour and a half. Still got some time. I think I might need a new mic arm. This one's falling over. Well, I, I will say it this time before I move off, off screens. So I will be right back. Two seconds. Yeah. Yes, mine. Um, okay, let me find it. Did you post it already? Your messages are not showing up. You should be able to just either post the second part of the URL. Yeah, can you paste it? Can you post it again? Something that will get through the YouTube filter and I can work out how to find it. Please. Cool. Super. Which one am I looking at, mate? So how's it going, man? Uh, this one, right? I'm on your, I'm on your one. Which which re, which um, repository you want me to look at? Okay, there's another one. So you need to make it public. Okay. Are you doing that now or do you want me to do the other one and come back? I can wait, I got time. Ping nine hundred milliseconds. Who's got a nine hundred millisecond ping? I hope I haven't. Do this one? Is it, is it this repo? Do you want to let me know? Oh. <laughs> still waiting he's making it public I thought it oh is he still this one popped up 
Okay, we'll come back to that. Gecko driver exe. Is another good straight to the point read me. Do you think yes, hundred percent? Absolutely, that project that had all of the th the all of the things of of well written code, where well documented. Um, absolutely, put that on your resume, hundred percent. I think that shows that you have a good understanding of. Uh, creating a project, managing your GitHub repo, um, classes, uh, functions, making sure you name stuff, you're documenting things well, 100%. Do that. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'll go to the other one. All right. I'll, okay. And I'll come back to your one. I promise. So another good uh, straight to the point repo. Can't go. Uh, read me. Can't go wrong with that. Just so you added the exe to just make it easier. Fair enough. Well, these notes all for your um, your friend as well. <laughs> You've got a demonstration. Nice. Right. Let's see what we're looking at. <laughs> I like the commits. Two years ago. Okay. Fair enough. So it's a Selenium project. This is where you're gonna. This is the way you said put all the information in, right? Okay. Okay. Right. Fair enough. I'm in lines 134. Right. So the first test that I like to do is to see if I can understand what's going on. Yes, made it public. Okay. I'm just going to run through this one, and we'll come back to your one. If you just tell me which which one it is that you want me to look at, because I can't see any more at the moment. Um, right. Fair enough. Going to the login URL. So when you're using Selenium or even Playwright, this does work, but you can also do, and I can't remember the exact thing, but it's it's like wait for element or something. So you can put that in there. So if, even if it takes longer than five seconds, it waits to find the element to load on that page. Or there's another one, which I think is wait for network traffic. So as soon as the network traffic is completely stopped, it knows the page is fully loaded. But that's not, that's all right. Grabbing some elements by ID. I um, don't remember specifically seeing it like that, but I'm sure this works. Sending the keys, obviously. Clicking the login button, perfect. And again the sleeps go to the URL X path for the table wait fill element wasn't working all yeah, right fair enough okay yep not a problem then if this this is what worked for you that's fine go below review scraper okay super I will do in just a minute mate thank you um, So we're looking for the students table and if it doesn't exist, we're just exiting. Fair enough. So that's all right. That's fair. I don't think you need this here. That goes with an if statement. There's no if statement. So we're looking for this table. From time and point sleep. I do it this way. I do time dot sleep. I find it neat. I just find this is not too many more characters, and I know exactly what I'm doing. So this is we're finding the table called stream. Then within that. We're looking for the information from that table. Okay. Okay. Sure. And then we just got a function stuck in here. So we're connecting to it. So 
So I think, I'm not sure what this is doing here. I guess we'll find it when it comes down. Oh, I see, success, okay. So we're more sleeping, because why not? <laughs> fair enough. No, no, it's fair enough. I mean, this, I, I know exactly what you were trying to achieve with this with this code. This code was was written to serve, serve a specific purpose. I totally get that I've written. Yeah, this is, this is cool. Join audio element. Again, raising the errors. So we're gonna go, so we've got like a double check here. So we're trying to find this. So I don't know if this one's totally necessary because if we can't find it, we would come to here anyway. So if it does, we join it with success. You had to make a really weird workaround. Ah, uh, I see. Right, because if it wasn't, you don't. You wanted it, you wanted it to keep looking, even if it was. Um... Right, I understand. I understand. Found the button. Refreshing. Okay, I get you. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And this is this is obviously your workaround for that problem. Success joins it. Okay, I understand. So failed. So just the, what's the failed one for? So we if we we try to join but we can't because it doesn't exist, we exit. Is that right? I can see that you had to put in some really funky stuff to make it work with whatever website this was. So I totally I'll take all that on board. I think the only th yeah. Uh, if it fails to join, there would be an element that gives the reason. So you need to get the reason. Okay, I understand. So I guess obviously this is two years ago built for a purpose. I'm, I totally get that. Um, I, all I would say really is just I, you can improve the readability just by um, structuring it a bit better and calling these um, I put all your functions go to the top and say this I would call them something slightly different just so it makes a bit more sense what it is because it's just randomly in the middle it's a bit confusing um, as to what it's for but I can see exactly what you're doing you're grabbing the URL and adding the um, you're getting the information and then checking to see if it can join the class right so I would just say think about your readability a little bit. I mean, I know this was two years ago, but I'm just going to go on what I'm seeing now. You, I'm sure you'll much, um, I'm sure you'll know all this. Just try and, yeah, try and structure it a bit better. Think about your readability. If it didn't reach this point, something is really wrong. Okay. Yeah. Think about your readability and maybe I would call the failed and success a bit better. Something different like um, joining or like failed to join or successful join successfully or something or maybe even like join I'd, I'd, yeah or whatever something like that um this is cool this is i like this sort of project because this was a, a specific specific problem that you thought i can i can just solve this with with selenium and python so you did So this is cool. I, I like it. I, I get. I, I I understand just from what you've been saying, um, Suraj, why you've done this. It's just a bit hard to read. That's the only thing, and it'll be a bit hard to figure out. I, I know you've had to do workarounds, but because it's all the way it's all um, structured like this, it's a bit figure, hard to figure out where things are going wrong if they are, which I think is why you've ended up with so many like bits here and there. But um, yeah, cool. Why not spend an hour to download? But when you can make a program that took twenty hours. We can get the book in a minute, exactly. 
yeah, you understand. This is cool though. I like it. I did a lot of code like this when I was learning as well to do to solve similar sorts of problems. And you know, you just make it work. You just make it. You make it work. However, it to get it to work like this makes it work, and so you, you move on. Nice. Right. Um, review scraper. Perfect. Got it. Um, okay, so it's uh, notebook, right? I can't make a one-minute task in one hour. Yeah. So you know what? I, I, possibly not totally the same, but when I found that I was automating things for a specific system that we were using, and um, it was quite old, so there wasn't API access. So I was doing a lot of automation in the UI. So all I did was I just thought about, I built something that did something really specific. And I was like, well, this might not save me a load of time. But over time, as I built upon it, I could easily then call back and do that specific thing again or make it to do something else with that as well. So it's all, I think it's always worth doing it in code if you can. And also, if you're learning, you learn stuff anyway. So what can I say? Um, so we don't have an awful, we don't have a massive README, but then this was a private repo until two minutes ago. So fair enough. It's another Selenium one. Okay. I don't know what this is. Action chains. Cool. Right. Hey, Eugene. Yeah, I saw a post on Reddit where someone bought an AHK from someone to do his job. Did that four years and the other didn't even know. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a classic post as well about someone who was working like three jobs and just automating them all. Um, eventually got found out. Um, the, the I'm I'm reviewing code. I'm I'm not. I say reviewing. I'm looking at other people's code and making some comments based on if I feel like I could help. So we've had a few. We've had a couple that have been really good. A couple that have been serving a really specific purpose, which has been also good. Um, but if you want me to have a look at yours, I can probably do a few more. I've only been going for nearly two hours, but. The only way to get it to me really is just to post part of your GitHub on into the chat, um, like the second part, like this bit here. How illegal is web scraping? Um, it's probably not. I just think if it's a, if it's a, if I don't have to log into anything, so if I don't have to log into a website for any reason, it's fine. But if you do log in and you're getting your personal data from that site for your personal use, I don't think that's an issue either. I think it becomes an issue if you log into a site and then pull loads and loads of data all the time and use it outside of personal use. But if you just go on a website and you're just grabbing the information, if you could pay a thousand people to go to every page, every minute, copy and paste the data, I don't see how that's different. Uh, right, cool. So uh, we've got URL lib pass, CSV, cool, more selenium. The thing you did is a bit illegal. Uh, probably not from getting the data point of view. <laughs> All right, so setting up our Chrome driver. Cool. And the first thing I'm noticing is some good looking functions to do specific things. So I like that. Um, quite often, and I haven't checked down any further, but quite often if you have a lot of functions that do this sort of thing, move them out to a helpers.py file just so you can import helpers and then have all your functions. But if it's just this one, don't abstract it for any reason other than just because you want to. It's ab this, this is absolutely fine right here as it is. It's just if you've got a lot of them, it makes sense to abstract them into their own file. We've got more regex. 
Uh, oh, cursor, because we're removing the ASCII characters. Okay. There must be, I'm sure this works. I'm sure there's a package that does this for you, but um, yeah, no, this is a solution to a problem. Good, we've got some comments, I like this. Scroll down to the page, load all the elements, okay? Yeah, that makes total sense to me. So we are using the actual scroll. Okay, and we're sleeping based on the speed and the height, okay. Okay, what's the next one? Checks to see if the next page exists and loads it if it does. So we're saying, we're giving it a page and a selector. Using the action chains. Okay, so click it and it returns true if it did that. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll just have to see how that works, how, we, how we're using this. Um, def click. Okay, so these are really good function names. Mixing cases here, but that's okay. I would just call this one uh, clicking, click some, whatever it is you're clicking, like button click or something. Um, that's fine. Uh, if the... Uh, so we're using this to find if there's more than one one or more selectors that meet this um, I would be consistent here as well so put CSS selector here as well um, okay okay all right cool get the date so we're passing information, get up votes. Okay. If up votes is equal, it's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's annoying when that happens. That's a reasonable enough solution. I see you're returning one as a string still though. I guess that's what you wanted. Okay. All right, so we're basically saying that these are all the selectors then. So you're choosing to store your selectors into variables okay i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that i would probably move all of this out of my main file just because it this is all really readable all of this apart from a few names are really readable and then we just get this chunk so I mean, you might abstract this out um we get our link And then we do all of our stuff, we get the information, that's all good. There's good use of the functions, field names, and then we're saving it with this CSV dict writer. Yep, yeah, that's all good. What's this one? Oh, if, the f if it doesn't exist. Water break at the gym. <laughs> Mate, fo focus on your gains, man, come on. I'm still live streaming. Yeah, keep people keep asking me to look at their code. Also, I hate regex. So do I. Um, I kind of see the use for it in this kind of thing, though. We're not passing anything with regex here. We're just using it to uh, get rid of some crap that we don't want. Um, right, so if we're not finding the file, we create it. If we do, Okay. If next page, scroll down and go through it all over again. Previous message didn't show. Okay, I, this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. Um, I really like your the use of the way that the functions that you've chosen to write. I think that makes total sense. I probably would abstract some of these into a helper along with 
Um, I don't know, it's not that long a file. Maybe not, I think that's fine. Um, I understand why you've done this. I do, I understand why you've done this. Part of it, part of me doesn't like it, but I'm not sure why. So I wouldn't lead, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dwell on that. Um, and this is just running through and exporting. So I can see that, um, You have much better cut. This is this is good. This is this. I think this is pretty good. So if you've if you've taken this and improved on it, um, and you're obviously using it for work, which you can't share, which I don't understand, then I think that's really cool. Um, there's a bit that I'm don't not quite getting. Where are we writing the actual date? Ah, oh, down here. Found it. So here we were just writing the file headers, and then down here we're actually writing the date. The, the data. Okay. I understand. Um, yeah, no, this is pretty good. Thanks for sharing this. This is good. I would suggest um, uh, with your accepts, um, find out what the actual error was that you get, because if you get another one, you're going to blast through it just in case there's another er another error that you might find. Um, it's not that important probably in this case, but I find uh, going forward you'll get more benefit out of it. So this is probably going to be a um, can't find the element error or something like that. So you want to have accept that error. So if you get any other errors, you can raise them. But if you get this specific one, you can do that. But this is good and you close it as well at the end which is always a good thing i think this is solid code man you got some good functions got some pretty good readability good um variable names i, I didn't even mention any of these because they're i know what they all are it's all self-explanatory this is good thanks for sharing this one man. i appreciate it check the review output file also okay this one So this is all the, is it this one you wanted to just look at? This is the output that comes out, right? No, the other one. This one? This looks pretty good. Yeah, this is a solid project. I think this is this is good, mate. This is good. Not sure I would use selenium for that. I'm sure, there's a better way, but if it works for you. Right. Um, this one. This 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 has got this dot js at the end though. Is this the right one, Eugene? Or is that just a test? I can't tell. Does it have to be Python? No, no, it doesn't have to be. No, no. I'm not that good at JavaScript. That's the only thing. But I will definitely. Well, it's this file, isn't it? You're switching to. Yeah, so I think. Um, I think I think you can do all of Amazon without Selenium. But. Um, that aside. That aside, um, if if it was any website, I still think this was this was a pretty good a pretty good approach. Thanks for sharing. The logic to scrape the website should be almost the same. Yeah. 
think so. Yeah. Right. So this is a. Um, indeed.com so we're going to be using yeah, browser we've got to look at the readme first man short and sweet tells you what it does tells you how to install it tells you how to run it pretty good can't can't go wrong with there there's no fancy images. There's no YouTube links. <laughs> I'm only joking. That's fine. Um, I was just looking for this. This is. I was just trying to confirm that it was published here. Is this um, just set, setting up? Yeah. Okay. Setting up the browser. Okay. Cool. Where's my um, this one? Yeah. Okay. So we've got our start URL, our page number, I'm going to open the page. So here's our scrape the current page function. Yeah, wait for selector. This is what I was talking about before. Um, this obviously works in this case, mosaic zone. So this is indeed.com. So you're waiting for I don't know if it'll redirect me to the UK one, no. I don't know if this will geolocate me. Yeah, it is. Not to worry. I think I know what that selector is. Anyway. Um, why is everyone scraping indeed? I just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. People like to, it's a challenge. Um, okay, wait for selector. That's what I was talking about before. So we're evaluating a page.evaluate, which I think gives us all of the um, data. So we're looking for the, oh, we're creating our URLs array. I might mix my terminology up. So if I say array and it's a if I say list and it's an array, um, apologize. Yep, this is this is the sort of CSS selectors that I like. Short and sweet. H two, then all the A tags, getting the href for them. So we're putting all of the links for the. Does this not get all of the? all of the links so like um, I know it go obviously we're assuming here that all the job titles come h2a and there's nothing else that's like that yeah I'd be tempted to be a bit more specific just in case some just in case on any other part of the site they pull they put h2 and then an a tag but no that's cool I see we're getting all the legs we're getting all the list getting all the jobs um, Async man promises. Making calling our selectors, We're creating our dictionary. Or whatever it's called. Ah, here's the job key. So we've seen this once before already. Hey, see, so you're using the text match as well. I'm sure it's somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, it comes after the. Hang on, I, I have to. I have to check this out now. I know this is the UK site, but we'll just have to deal with it for a moment. Right. My head might be in the way, but I'll just have to tell you. So it's this specific bit of information. It's this bit, I think. Job key. 
I'm sure it's in here. Is it not? Oh, I felt sure it was. How did I do it before? Okay. Not to worry. I'm sure when I did this, I didn't use um, regex. I'm sure it was in the link or something. Yeah, it's that. Where have I gone? Here. Can you see that? So in the in the A, uh, in the anchor, the link, there's this attribute data dash JK which has the um, the job ID in. So that would avoid uh, that would avoid having to do this I believe because you can just get the attribute so going to all the pages scan number So you obviously don't want this. Okay. So this is the... URL's link, push, current page, data. Okay. So I am limited on my JavaScript knowledge, but from what I can see, this looks, as in the approach, looks pretty much like pretty, pretty standard and pretty much exactly where you want to be at um is it um how quick is it to go through the pages because i know it says i know it's async but it's still loading up a browser right it's pretty cool though i think this is i think this is pretty good seems to be pretty solid I can under it's slow very slow yeah yeah I should um I need to get my uh is it too complex no I don't think so no I don't think so um I don't know about the specifics of yeah your code yeah 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 no, I don't think it is I don't know about the specifics of like the, the real the JavaScript specifics but from from my point of view I've I've just read through this and I mean I stopped to, to show you the selector but all of it I totally understand what you were doing and why um, so I think I think it makes total it makes sense so, yeah I think it's quite it's neat concise it's not particularly long I think this is good. This is this is good. I mean, it, the problem is, is it's going to be slow, as you say. Um, I don't know why the I can't get on the um, the US version of the site, but I don't know why it's um, it doesn't work the other way with just HTML scraping. Um, but no, this is good. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Where does this um this I this is where does this bit fit in? Uh, I, where does the page vary? Oh, is it here? Is it is it this? Or is it further down? Set how many pages to go through. Right, I understand. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't see um, down. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't see. Um, it's commented out. Got yeah. I just couldn't see where that was fitting in. No, 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 cool. Yeah, nice. Thanks for sharing that. 
JavaScript, not what I'm used to, but um, yeah, that's good. That's good. I've enjoyed this. As long as you don't ask me to start looking at my code. Let me see if I can find my... I don't know if I put it up. Couldn't figure out how to do multiple pages. Yeah. Um, I know how I would do it. Just I don't know how I would do it in JavaScript. I don't fully understand the promises and everything. This was your first time. Really? This is really good for a first time. Here's my awful readme. Don't write readmes like this. Hi Nicholas, jumping in late, no worries. I'm actually gonna jump off real soon, but thanks for um, dropping by. How to speed up Chrome driver in Python. Um, I haven't, it's not something I've ever really dived, it's not something I've ever really gone into much trying to speed it up. I always just found it slow and clunky and useful for literally testing out websites rather than scraping. So like, it's, it's not designed to go through pages and pages and pages really quick. Um, so I don't really have a good answer for you, I'm afraid. Um, developer, hello mate, how's it going? Right, let me, I just wanted to show you um, how I kind of approached it. Uh, so I did, I know this is not the same. I know it's the, it's the same site, but it's not the same sort of thing as in not compared to the last one. But you can see that I've got getting the data. So what I'm doing here is, I know I'm not using, um, I am using a session, it's down, down the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm returning out a tuple one part, the first half has their, um, is there a way to get the data from the network tab? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. The most popular video on my channel shows the really basic way of doing it. But basically what you do is you can, you can't really do it on Indeed, I don't think. But in here, it gives you, um, this one says GraphQL. So, Let's just say that we went here and this, this response held all the information. What you can do is you can come here and you can just copy the response out and you could, it comes with all the, the request URL. You can see it here, the, it's a post, you can copies all the headers, uh, the request headers, and then you can just remake that request in Python and it will spit out generally the um, actual response, which is almost always JSON of all the information that you want. Obviously, this isn't. This is just an example. This isn't what we want. We don't care about that. You mean we like all the files? What? So like, I don't know what you mean by the files. So this is the response. So if this response was a file, you could make this same request and just use content and get the response as a file and save it. Is that what you mean? But you see, I'm returning um, the first part of my tuple is the next, the link for the next page. And the second part has got the information I want in. So then this function takes in one of the jobs from this and then just passes it and then returns the dictionary. Need a way to bypass Cloudflare security. Okay. I'll, um, when I get a chance, I should be able to do it this weekend. I will um, I'll get my VPN up and I'll go US and I'll, I'll see if I can find an easier way. But if it's Cloudflare, hmm, might not be worth it. Have a look. Cloud Scraper. Yeah, I need to try Cloud Scraper. Um, yeah. There's, um, for your script, hang on. Are you saying, 
Oh no, this way works, right, this way. Yeah, I, sorry, I got confused. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna show you? Oh yeah, the fact that I spit a tuple out so I can go to the next page. So I can always just keep going through and just makes it much shorter whilst doing the same thing. Well, I must have been feeling fancy when I wrote this because I even wrote um, type hints or whatever they are. Right, cool. Well, um, that's two hours 20. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, having a look at loads of people's different people's code and people's approach to things. Uh, I think it's been really good. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Um, so I'm going to call it there. I'm going to head off carry on with the rest of my evening but um i really appreciate you all dropping by um we've had a good conversation as well i think so i really enjoyed it um i shall be back soon as i always say i can't commit to a schedule because i don't know where i'm gonna be what i'm doing etc 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 work life youtube streaming all that stuff anyway thanks for dropping by guys and um i don't think the guys that donated are still here but if they are um i really appreciate it that's what i mean made my night to be honest um but yes yeah, great thanks for um, thanks for watching and i will see you